Hey guys, Bullet GD here. We're here for the last official. Actually, never mind. We do have a Henry Sixman later today. But anyway, the last visual scheduled appearance before we go on to a random schedule. Um, anyways, we're here for the second half of JoJo Part 1. I believe it is Phantom Blood. Actually, I have the notes somewhere. Yeah, Phantom Blood. Okay, anyways. Last time we checked. Oh, last time we checked, uh, Baron William Zeppeli had taken Jojo, jo Jonathan Joestar under his wing. Um, they are traveling with Speedwagon, which was a crime boss. Um, and they're traveling to... Wind Knight's Lot, um, which is the, is a town where there's disappearances thanks to Dio and Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper, as a zombie, um, comes to attack them in a tunnel that they are transferring, transferring to, through, um, and this is where Jonathan first starts his training and is actually able to use Hamon. Ham, Hamon. Um, anyways... In this village, the group they find themselves was once the living quarters of a knight. As the group looks for Dio, the Baron tries to give Speedwagon some Haman to just to just hurt him in the process. In that instance, a young lad named Poco takes the group's wealth, um, trying to escape by cliffside. Jojo uses Haman to take out the chunk he is currently climbing. To capture him, they realize it was one of Dio's tricks. Um, he had hypnotized the the boy to lure Jojo and the rest into a night's graveyard as night fall, at night as night fall. The dead um, the dead rise and Dio shows his face. Jojo and the Baron fight their way through the through to get to him. Um, Baron goes to use Hammond on Dio for him to vaporize the moisture in his arms to suck the heat from Baron's blood. So basically, the only re it ain't freezing breath or freezing touch. It's just he evaporates the the heat. Basically, he has nothing to heat him up, so he needs another heat source. So he takes another person's heat, and basically that it doesn't. Freeze, freeze, it just turns their skin cold to where it almost is like a freeze burn. So the ice is kind of stupid. Um, he ends up freezing the Baron's arm. They both go to attack with their opposing arm. Dio fr fre freezing and Baron's Haman, but Jojo interferes intervenes and I will say Jojo is Jonathan Joestar we're calling him Jojo this entire time um he puts his hand in between to stop the freezing and from um from it affecting the Baron um the Baron tries to kick Dio to free Jojo's hands from Dio's freeze um but jo Dio counters with his nails to cut into his leg um, they fall to Speedwagon as Dio has more uh, minions rise to attack Jojo. These are two knights. These two knights were the knights of Mary of... Um, sorry. She was Mary of Scotland. She was the queen trying to oppose Queen Elizabeth for the throne of England. Um, one night her, her husband dies... And she blamed... Actually, no, 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 no. I think it was Elizabeth blamed Mary. And Mary was locked up for such. And basically the knights not believing this and went to attack the army to free their queen. Um, they demolish them and then Queen Elizabeth gives them um, a deal. Basically, she will free Mary if they give their own lives. 
So basically, this is beheading. Um, basically, they're going to be beheaded for their queen instead to go free. Which, of course, it is in vain because as they're about to get their heads chopped off, thinking they are some righteous knights to their queen, um, Mary has already been beheaded and is only a few feet away from them. They, they see her dead head. And apparently, um, these knights, even during living, um, the hatred or just plain they can do this, um, the, one, the one knight, the knight's hair, this is Bluefrid who has hair powers. Basically, his hair can do whatever he wants at will, and basically, it can suck blood when it he, when he becomes a zombie. He can suck blood out of his enemy through his hair, and then his hair can kind of be like a whip. Apparently, when he's dying, he went to a, take out the legs of, of his assailant, and uh, the other one, which was um, Taruskan, Tarukas, Tarukas, okay, I got it. Um, he was such a brute that his muscles were made it so hard to cut through his neck that they used several axes to cut through it. Um, anyways, Speedwagon uses his stomach to heat the Baron's arm. Um, Bluefrid, um, and Tuk uh, Tarukas, okay, sorry, he went over that. Jojo fights Bluefrid after filling the night with Haman. His pain and thoughts return to him, giving him a knight's death. Um, so basically, I, I skipped through a lot of stuff. Basically, Bluefrid and uh, Jojo, they go into a fight. They go into a lake. Um, Jojo needs to get um, uh, air to breathe to get his Haman. But against his, his uh, instinct from going to the surface, he runs down to... Apparently it's a mining town, so there's a pockets of air. He used that pocket of air to get enough Hammond to knock him out of the water, um, and basically that sent um, that gave him enough time to get out, get his breath, get his bearings. Um, of course, he's uh, Blue Blue is able to get him tangled in his hair and all that, but of course. Jojo is able to get free. He hits him with a lot of Haman. That Haman is able to fill his body enough to give him enough to uh, come back to his senses. Give him back the pain that he had as a human. He basically turns him back into a human as his dying moments. And for this nightly death, let me go back to it. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Before dying, he gives Jojo his sword named Luck, given to him by his queen. Um, his last action was marking it with his blood as Pluck. Um, Tarukas disrespects his death, saying he was a vermin, trying to get a lot of it with, with thoughts, too. Um, he starts his own fight. But uh, before this, um, the Baron and Jojo use their Haman to use to make a glider out of leaves. Basically, they every human being in living thing has a electrical magnetic force, and basically they use that, put it all together, and use themselves as magnets to to the leaves, and use it to glide across, um, to avoid his attacks and strikes. Um, um, he, Tarukas ends up following them to swat them at, at the glider, but the glider is damaging him because it's full of Haman. Um, but he doesn't give up. Um, so the group decides to bear themselves for another attack. But the Baron has Jojo try to put um, Poco um, in the Knight's training grounds, which they ended up landing in, for protection. For Jojo just to be ensnared in a double-headed dragon knight's death duel arena with Tarukas. This locks the door behind them because the duel starting. There's basically collars around their neck with chains up, up over a stone column. Um, basically whomever has the more strength to pull the other one up and it chokes them to death. Um, and without, an, without any resistance they can get to their opponent, get the key and free themselves. Um Let's see here. 
as Jojo is left without air, uh, basically pulls Jojo straight up. He's left without air, so no Haman. The group are trying to find a way in. He's, uh, I already did that. Poco is able to get through a cross-shaped door. He opens the door with a switch, but not without getting damaged. So basically, he gets out of the the shape, the cross-shaped window, and Tarukus punches him to a wall. This causes a lot of injury. He's able to open the switch, allowing uh, Speedwagon and the Baron to come in. Um, then the Baron comes across a view that scares him to death because this is his death scene that was foretold by his master. Um, basically, before he finished his last little session of Haman, um, he said, you have your chance to back out now. This is the last little foot uh, footnote. If you do this, you have to die. There is no walking away from this. You have to die if you do this. Um, and basically he says, I will continue on this path as long as I know what my future is and how much time I have. And the only thing he says is, you, he doesn't even, I don't think he even tells him a time. He just says, here's the scene when you know you're going to die. Which is basically just, you're going to be in this castle, ancient ruins. You're going to be lit, you're going to be, op your way will be opened by a young lad, Poco. Um, and you will be um, watch, looking at a scene where there is a young lion, Jojo, who is uh, chained down. Um, and you must free him to have his future um, come true and all that. And it's like, okay. <laughs> well, this guy's going to die. And basically he does. He goes to attack him. Sure, the Baron's able to escape. But the thing is, since... Um, Tarukus is so used to this kind of combat because he was a master and was here um, at this castle. He's able to take him off guard. He's able to go over top of him, uh, grab his chain, and tie him in chains, and basically lift Jojo up to where he's choking him, and also put Baron Zeppeli to where he's getting like he's getting strangled half through his uh, torso. Um, um, but of course this strangulation just becomes to where he cuts the Baron in half this also breaks Jojo's neck um, either by the pure force of trying to get him pulled up or when he drops down from the immediate force of, of uh, the Baron dying um And then let's see here. The Baron gives the last of Haman to Jojo. Jo Jojo uses this to heal his neck and break his restraints. And then immediately goes to just whip Tarukas' ass. Um, and then uh, the Baron's last words are that he, to destroy the mask, that Jojo was a best friend slash son to him. Um, to go forward without tears to fight Dio. And last but not least... That he was, when he was young, that he got married, and this might lead up to a child. Um, oh, we're on the last page. We're so close, guys. The group head back to the town for them to be too late. All are mostly undead. After a zombie attack attacks, the Baron's Haman friends, Dyer and um, Straitso, um, and their teacher, um, come to meet them all. And learn of their fellow Haman user's death. After. Oh yeah. After checking on. Um, Poco's family. Whom are fine. Except for the older sister. Who went to look for po Poco. Um, who was captured by Dio by the way. Our group. Is, uh, um, our group. And the Haman users. Go to Dio's castle. To save the girl. There's a snake villain. That Dio. That. Just Jojo says, I ain't got places to go, places to be. You're gonna die. Um, and then uh, other zombies surround them, but uh, they push through because, you know, they have Haman. They can go easily go through. And uh, they end up going to Dio for a final stand. 
but of course this makes it to where they need to part ways because they have Speedwagon who even though he was attempted to be given Haman, he doesn't have Haman. Um, they they also have Poco and his sister, which are just defenseless kids. So they have to let. Uh, um, I'm trying to find him. Oh shoot! I I flipped by accident. Um. Shoot. I really sh should have just read it off of this. Um, oh, uh, so Straight So and Master uh, Tom Petty. Um, they need to stay back to protect them and protect them off the zombies. Why Jojo and Dyer go to freaking Dio and Dyer just dies. And it's kind of stupid. Um, the first thing he does to uh, Jojo when he first meets him is use this move where basically he uses his legs to push past the person's arm and then use his hands to chop at their neck. D D Jojo is able to just headbutt the dude where this should have been seen, but Jojo knows about the freezing touch and doesn't warn him about this. And he goes straight up to deck Dio and his snaz and, and he just gets frozen. His body gets destroyed. He gets th His head gets thrown into a, a nearby rose, a pot of roses. And the last thing he does is just spit a humming ro field rose at Dio and it doesn't even do anything. He just heals back after cer a certain point in time. Dyer is just that weird funky dude that just hey I have this weird ability to do this and then dies I, I and I even though I haven't watched part 3 Polnarov um John J-E-A-N John Polnarov is just a straight up copy of Dyer's design with a freaking pillar of hair there's a lot of redesigns if you can kind of look back at these things. Like, not, don't talk about Joe Stars because, you know, they're the Joe Star bloodline. And they're supposed to kind of look similar. But the fact that you just redesign characters through past. Like, I'm getting huge Father Pucci vibes from their master, uh, Tom Petty. Um, and then, uh,. One of the pillar men from part two that I'm about to start watching, um, I think it's actually I think it's Cars. It looks straight up like Bluefrid, and I'm like, so you're redesigning shit. Good job. But anyways, back to the story. Um, uh, Dyer dies, and then here comes just the main character using the sword he got from Bluefrid pluck um, to stab Dio. Dio thinks he can just freeze the main character but thing is there's a flame behind him. It heats up the sword heating up his arms letting Hama through and he just freaking blitzes the Hama through the sword to blow up his body basically. And if it weren't for Dio cutting his freaking head off, he would have been dead. Because apparently, for any zombie or vampire to die in this universe, you have to destroy the head with Haman. Understandable, but Jesus Christ. Um. Um, and then a minion of, of Dio, which I believe is the... Chinese drug dealer slash maker from the earlier episodes that end up giving him the drugs to drug George Joestar. Um, I believe that's the minion that is able to save Dio's head. Um, but anyways, Jojo, well, they destroy the rest of the zombies, but Jojo returns to Erina. They get married. They go on a voyage for their honeymoon. Everyone says bye, so there's literally no one but Jojo and Erina on this. Dio and his minion are off freaking on the voyage basically 
Um, Dominion is able to sneak aboard, but um, he hides Dio's head inside a uh, a coffin that is super durable, and he can unlock it from the inside. Um, which, if, if it weren't for a sailor, if the sailor were to say, "Hey, what's in this?" They would have been dead. Like, like Dio would not have got where he been if they just brought it down and opened the damn thing. Because um, then they would have noticed that's unlocked from the inside. We need to figure out if this is going to be some kind of stowaway. Could have, could have saved Jonathan. Just saying. I know part three would would not have been as good for the future, but oh my God, they could have saved the. They could have saved the main timeline if they did this. People that are JoJo fans, you'll understand by the end of part six. They could have saved the main timeline if Jay just opened a goddamn coffin they thought was suspicious. <sighs> Anyways, during the voyage, all of a sudden, the minion infects one person, which ends up infecting most of the voyage. And then Jojo's like, that he notices the minion says, Whoop, Dio's here, apparently. I'm gonna go fight him. The first thing Dio does, he gets smart. The first villain that gets smart, he says, You can use Haman, which is like deadly to me, but I can counter it somehow. But this time, just to make sure I don't die, let's take away your complete ability to do anything against me. And he takes his like neck muscles. And just stabs right into the, uh, like the, 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 basically every area that controls the rest of the body. He does that to make sure it fails Jojo. And also it's fatal. He, he punctures fatal veins and stuff to make him die. So basically Jojo is dying and also he can barely do anything because he, he severed the ability to move basically from him. And... Sure, the minion thinking the main character is useless at this time decides to attack him. But I mean, yeah, I don't even need this. Is like the biggest part that I remember. But JoJo just goes uppercut cuts the freaking dude, explodes his head, fills the body with Haman to just control the body. Apparently, he's Dio now. Throws him to the to the engine area for, for the ship. Holds a certain part that ends up clog in the system from moving which ends up making frustration explosions flames this ship's about to go down in flames now titanic 2 anybody well actually this would be the first titanic technically because i don't think titanic would have been made by now anyways aaron uh, being like okay so apparently my husband wants to say absolutely nothing and run off on our honeymoon um This ends up just having her left where zombies are taking over the ship. So she's running trying to find Jojo among zombies and these people that are getting killed. Um, she finds Jojo eventually. He's almost at the verge of death. And I also forgot to mention this even in the book that I'll, my writing. Which basically Dio wants to cut my boy Jonathan's head off and take his body for his own. Um... You know, just be like, hey, you're the one who did this to me. I'm going to just take your crap and happy marriage. Um, but anyways, back to Aaron and all that. Basically, boohoo, Jonathan's about to die. Boohoo, Dio's a little boy that doesn't want to interrupt the talking he got smart to attack his biggest enemy the second he walks in the room but can't take the moment to kill off his bride and his enemy in one moment to get the body okay but anyways um also this could have prevented any other part from coming i'll talk about that in a minute but anyways erina says she doesn't want to leave jojo and then a freaking mother um, tries to protect her child from a bait from a zombie. The zombie basically 
punches her straight down through the floor, which ends up right next to JoJo and Erna. Her baby is still alive, though. Basically, JoJo says, take the freaking baby, get in that coffin that he's just sitting there, and go. Well, actually, no, he doesn't say take the coffin. He says, go take a ship or something and get out of here. Try to save yourself and this child. Um, and leave me. She doesn't want to do it, but of course, little little life that could prosper will do this. Ends up leaving, um, going. Uh, Dio tries to not to stop it. You know, could have stopped it the entire time they were talking, but he wants to stop it now. Jojo catches him. Basically, it's a loving brother hug at the very end. And Dio spouts nonsense. Says, "I'll give you eternal life. I will give you anything. I will give you power, Jojo. Just give me the chance to get out of this, like of oh, this inferno." And Jojo, you know, the thing that he, like, last last few minutes of that episode, he just, of course, dies. You know, the thing that you told him would eventually happen, he dies. You know, the thing that you vitally attacked him, he dies. Anyways. Dio, Jojo, they're done for this part. Aaron is ruined somehow either the ship just blows up completely or she's able to strong woman herself out of that and flip the coffin over the side and jump with the baby into it um anyways another voyage or something is able to come across them save them um and basically at the very end the big panache is that she's pregnant with Jojo Jo uh, Jonathan's baby and there'll be more, more parts so basically if Dio would not be a gentleman and let them talk kill the wife kill your main enemy and you could have stopped any other parts from happening there would be no there would be no George Joestar the second there would be no Joseph there would be no Jotaro there would be no Josuke there would be no no Jolene or Joan. There would probably be a journal, journal, but not the one we think. Because there would actually, would they be? I don't, I don't know how it works. Because thing is, there is no blood to uh, piece them together. Because in part three, he used Joseph's blood to make the body bind to his. So that's kind of confusing. Anyways, Journal would be probably the only freaking Joe, Joe Star to ever be um, an actual thing. Um, if he just fucking killed Erna. Anyways, before I finish this, I'm just going to go over. I was told to read th this material. Basically, it's the story of George Joe Star the second. Basically, Erna gets back, tells everyone, boo-hoo, Jonathan's dead. Um, she basically adopts the little kid that they found on the on the voyage, and her name's Lisa Lisa. Basically, she's raised, and then, actually, no, I think Zeppelin's, or either Zeppelin or the Speedwagon Foundation. Uh, Speedwagon takes him up on that and, and raises her, but I believe Aaron raises her. Um, but uh, George Josar II is raised by Aaron. Um, he goes to the military. Boom. I don't understand this part. I think it's supposed to be... Um, I believe it's supposed to be a zombie, but I also believe it's... It's, it's most likely a zombie. But I, but I, everyone says it's supposed to be a vampire that Dio made. But I'm, Dio would be too. It's it's a zombie. A zombie ends up killing George Joestar the second, um, because he's basically a, suspicious of his general or something like that. He goes to check on on what's happening, and then it's a zombie ends up killing George. Lisa Lisa married to George at this point, and also had a kid. Joseph Joestar, which will happen in part two. She goes to kill off the the zombie that killed her husband because 
like it looks bad that you killed a freaking um a corporal general you're gonna look bad in the eyes of the government so she has to go hide with the speedwagon foundation which apparently i'm still confused about how speedwagon gains so much freaking money i i'm guessing he just picked up the joy joe star wealth and said you know well my best friend's dead might as well take it for my own um but anyway she's taken away and i believe she's taught under zeppelis and she's taught how to use haman which will set up her to be the new mentor for part two and then of course joseph joestar her son who's left by 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 himself with her his grandmother Arno to be the new Jojo of part two. It's so confusing when you don't have little pieces. I love Jojo, but it's just like the the reappearance of the same design and also the, the fact that there are moments that I could have taken out of the first part of this and made it easier, but it didn't. Anyways, that's basically it from part one all the way to the middle of part one and two. So the story of George Joe started the second one. So we've seen three Joe stars so far and one villain. One villain. Which I'm going to eventually cover, but it, it's stupid. Actually, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it now. I'm gonna say it now. Spoiler alert. I spoiled this for myself, but spoiler alert. Um, Dio's connected to basically everything. The only thing, technically, he is not put into is part four and kind of part two. Because part one, he's the main villain. Part two, he's kind of not because... It's basically the stone mask he used. The origin slash associates are in part two. They're the villains of that. The pillar men are the creator slash relevance of why that mask exists. Basically, they are other vampires. So Dio is not a vampire. He's technically a very low powered pillar man. And then part three, basically, Dio comes back. Part four is just Jojo looking around for this random kid that his grandfather spit out. And there's a random psycho that has a thing for hands. And then part five is basically his freaking son. His, the entire part of part five is his son. And then part six is his friend basically part six i want to see this because i i want to see how stupid dio looks in, in the new style um basically he comes across a priest in training i think it was and he basically says i know the the truth of the universe and god and all that i can tell you the secrets of life i just need you to come back to my castle back where i started and I'll show you this journal. Well, part three happened and that journal got burnt. And so all the secrets of life that Poochie wanted were burned thanks to Jotaro. And Jotaro is his biggest enemy now because he took the secrets of life. That's basically what it is. And then part seven, even though he he's shown as like an anti-slash um villain of part seven he basically is an anti-hero i will tell i will say this is he's an anti-hero he he will go against the joe star but yet he still doesn't want other people in his way so he he's a part of part seven in part eight we just joe jolian i don't want to see it is so confusing the new timeline is confusing to me, but it exists. So I will, just being a JoJo fan, I will watch it. 
And uh, hopefully I'll like it like everyone else does. Because apparently Part 8 is the best thing that's ever been created. But it is so wacky that everyone just makes a joke about it multiple times. Oh, anyways. Next part. I also gotta get to season two somehow. Actually, I don't know if I... Did I get to season two? Did I get to season two? I don't know if I got to season two. I'm waiting. There we go. I'm checking real quick. Where are we at with summaries? Okay, so I have to watch. I have to go and do summary of season two, which is convoluted, but I don't care. I don't. Oh, and I already did season two. So season three. I gotta do three. I don't gotta do season three. I'm not doing the the choices. I'm just. Because all the choices just end up in several different endings. See you guys in the next video. Bye.